Emily, did you have something you wanted to give today? I don't think. Mm -hmm. I've got these flowers for now. Going literally two minutes or something like that. We'll let you set the pace then.
Folks, we're going to be starting in just a few moments. Can I ask, or ask you all a very big favour, please? Hayden is going to be using the Bluetooth technology to talk to the speakers. Um, I don't know whether you've heard, but every now and again, if your phones are on, in the middle of something, you'll that like, lick, lick, lick noise. <laughs> and we're going to try and avoid that. So if you could put your, turn your phones off, we'd be really good.
inevitably is tinged with sadness. We know that the very, very last thing that mum would want is for anyone here to be sad. So, instead, let's smile and have a joyous celebration of a magnificent, beautiful, wonderful lady who touched and enriched the lives of so many people. Many of you will know that mum was uh, a committed member of the Baha'i community. And so who better to explain the journey of the soul than her very dear friend, Violette. Violette. As Sean said, I think you all know, Sheila was a Baha'i. And the reason I'm so certain about that is that she never missed an opportunity to tell people about her strong faith and its teachings. Now in the Baha'i faith, there is no clergy. We don't have any formal position. So I'm not here in any official capacity, but just as a family friend. 
and I feel honoured and privileged to be asked by the family to say a few words about the Baha'i approach to death, the life hereafter, and the journey of Sheila's soul. Baha'is believe that the soul of an individual joins with the body at the moment of conception and then goes on to live forever. Once the baby is born, the soul starts the second stage of its journey, life on this earthly plane, trying to acquire virtues and spiritual qualities such as love, kindness, generosity, patience, forgiveness, through active service to others. These qualities become the identifying characteristics that our soul takes with it to the next world. To quote from the writings, what we have left is what we have made of our souls. Sheila was brought up in a loving Christian family and even as, at a young age always had an open mind towards all things spiritual. She often retold the story of an experience in an RE lesson in the, at her secondary school where the following quote from the Bible really touched her and stayed with her. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Years later, in her work as a teacher and head teacher, she got to know children and families from all different religious backgrounds and it raised questions in her mind. How could one faith claim to be the right one? How could they claim to be the only truth? So when in her 50s she was introduced to the Baha'i faith by her dear friends Chris and Ted, with one of the core principles of the faith being the oneness of religion, that they all come from the same God and fundamentally share the same truth. It didn't take her long to become a Baha'i and embrace Baha'u'llah's teachings. And rather than feeling that she had turned her back on Christ and Christianity, she knew that she was taking the next logical step of recognizing the return of Christ in the full glory of the Father and accepting that all faith share the same essential truth. Sheila lived her life by her Baha'i principles in a genuine and practical way, opening her arms and home to friends and strangers alike irrespective of racial, religious or social background. They came from all walks of life to find comfort in her love and kindness. And she, re she refused to see the bad in people. Not that she was naive, by no means. She knew what people were up to. <laughs> but always looked at their positive qualities. Somehow, she took the Baha'i concept of one human family quite literally. I don't know how she managed it, but she became the adopted grandmother and auntie to so many children, mother to so many young people, the sister you could only wish for, and at the same time being a kind and loving best friend to all. Her dedication to education, the education of children, will no doubt be mentioned later on. So suffice to say here that bringing out the very best in every child through loving encouragement seemed to be in her very DNA. She embodied the concept of children are the most precious treasure a community can possess for in them 
are the promises and guarantee of the future. Her contribution to the teaching of religious education in Birmingham was so phenomenal that I went recently to a meeting, this is now over 10 years ago, and people in the education department are still talking about it. So now that Sheila's soul has left her body, and like it says so beautifully, not just left her body, the bird has burst its cage asunder and is soaring into the heavens. And she has entered the spiritual world of God on the final stage of her journey, returning to the Creator. And we can be confident that as the writings say, she will be beholding God's splendor from the loftiest mount. So as well as celebrating Shiva's life and honoring her memory, the beautiful readings and music chosen by family and friends for this service will no doubt help the progress and upliftment of her soul. And surely, the best way to honor Sheila is to honor her faith. That remarkable strong faith that she held onto steadfastly with all the tests and difficulties to the very end of her life. Son of man, thou art my dominion, and my dominion perisheth not. Wherefore fearest thou my perishing? Thou art my light, and my light shall never be extinguished. Why dost thou dread extinction? Thou art my glory, and my glory fadeth not. Thou art my robe, and my robe shall never be outworn. Abide then in thy love for me, that thou mayest find me in the realm of glory. The body of man is a temple in which a spirit or soul develops. The body is the lamp and his soul the light therein. The spiritual soul is the very essence of life. The spirit does not need a body, but the body needs the spirit, or it cannot live. The soul can live without the body, but the body without the soul dies. No verily that the soul is a sign of God a heavenly gem whose reality the most learned of men hath failed to grasp, and whose mystery no mind, however acute, can ever hope to unravel. It is the first among all created things to declare the excellence of its creator, the first to recognise his glory, to cleave to his truth, and to bow down in adoration before him. If it be faithful to God, it will reflect his light and will eventually return unto him. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful explanation, Violette, and thank you for the lovely, lovely words. Whether you're a member of the Baha'i community or not, I'm sure you'll agree with me that those words will resonate with everything that good people revere. Let's take a moment, if we may, just to reflect upon that by listening to some wonderful music. And in fact, one of Mum's particular favourites, For the Beauty of the Earth, by John Rutter.
it was very difficult to put into words how special our mum was. Not only to us, but to so many people. So Hayden and I thought that as she devoted so much of her life to us, and how she had prioritised us, and how she'd made sacrifices for us, it would be fitting that we say some words at this moment. And indeed, after Hayden and I have said some words, I'm going to ask if anybody else would like to say anything. But first I'm going to ask my dear brother Hayden to begin. A huge and colossal thank you to everyone for being here. A uh, really warm welcome. It's a significant comfort to me that I know for sure that you're here uh, to celebrate the life of our wonderful mother. Um, I promise you I'll do my very best to get through this without too much of a crappy voice, but I hope you'll understand if I don't always succeed. The 14th of July, when Mum passed, was the probably the most challenging day of my life. Um, because, you know, not just because I lost my mother, but because I lost my dearest friend. A friend who loved me unconditionally which is a, a rare and precious gift, and not one that's easy to lose. Now, all of you here, and those who are watching at home, such as the marvel of you know, technology that Mother's Funeral is being brought to, I think you'll be quite amazed by that. Um, you'll all have your own memories of Sheila, and what she meant to you in a way that's unique to you. Um, but that you know, had an overwhelming number of messages of condolences and cards uh, and expressions of love since Mum died, which really are a testament to her decades of influence, compassion, dedication, commitment to the growth and development of other people. So I'm just going to give you a, a small selection, if I might, of some of the things that a couple of people have said who aren't able to be physically here today. So her long-standing colleague, Heather, and her husband, John, they, they said, Sheila meant a great deal to us. As the head teacher of White House Common, she was so caring and wonderful with all the children. One of mother's remarkable skills was just a phenomenal way of being with children. But for me as a teacher, as a young teacher, she was a brilliant role model always a yes-you-can person. She was very creative, always interested in everyone and everything, and she certainly inspired me as a brand new teacher. Her sense of fun and enthusiasm have helped me grow and enjoy every minute as a teacher, but also as a person, and she'll be much missed. One of her former pupils, Jack, and his family, he said, your mum was always a real beacon of light. Her positivity shone through where we were struggling. She was one amazing lady. We have always remembered her little saying around life and living. It's not a race, she'd say. And we can hear her saying it now. She was always so kind, so encouraging, and has always until now and always will remain in our hearts. Her friend Diane, who uh, was a, a companion and helped me support Mum through some difficult times over the recent years, she can't be here today, but she was, wants to say to Mum, our special friendship was unique. Our strong bond was so powerful, I shall carry our strong, loving friendship with me always. I'll never forget your wisdom and advice. And most importantly, I'll not forget your infectious smile. Sweet dreams, sweet lady. Much love. Now, so many people, and what people recall about Mum, is, just to be artistic for a moment, is what William Wordsworth very mellifluously described as that best portion of a good man's life, his little, nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and of love. Of course, when you put them all together at the end of a life and reflect, they can often represent someone who is quite, and has been, 
quite extraordinary. But my brother and I have been truly privileged by a remarkable mother-son relationship. A mother who gave herself to utterly to our growth and development. She fought with tenacity to ensure we had a secure home. And often, you may not realise this, she was quite an introvert. And when you saw her out and about, she didn't appear to be. It's, it's a quality that she and I share. About being always, when you have to put yourself forward, it's always out of the comfort zone. But Mother never did it for herself. She always did it because of other people. And fundamentally, she always did that for sure for me. A, a lovely memory of mine. Memory, I have moments, lots of moments and memories when I could burst with pride thinking about my mother. But there was one in particular. In the early 1990s, two or three years before Mum retired, and she had over 25 years of fabulous retirement. You know, how on earth she ever found time to work in those 25 years prior to that, I don't know. She had such a rich retirement. But in a couple of years before she retired, she was hosting a big event for hundreds of children and parents. And there was, a, as you might remember, large school halls and venues, lots of cacophony, noise, children, and no one able to calm down until Mrs. Williams walks into the middle of the hall. Says nothing, and does this. <laughs> and within seconds, complete silence. No. Such was the humble authority she carried, but more importantly, the depth of respect that people instinctively had for her. And that moment I thought, wow, that's my mother. Eleven years ago, um, just over eleven years ago, it was apparent that mum's mobility was becoming compromised. And we sort of had a conversation that, why don't we think about being together rather than waiting until you have to move? And so she gave up her beloved home in Southern Coalfield, and moved in with me just at the time when I was moving to for work just outside of Liverpool. Um, and I suppose for those 11 years, increasingly I became her carer and her support. And that was a very difficult situation for her, a woman of phenomenal independence. Um, and the last thing she wanted to be was to be dependent upon me. And she knew the sacrifices that I was making uh, and she struggled with that. And we would talk a lot about it. And mostly, you know, we coped with the situation. You know, we weren't paragons of virtue. There's occasional slamming of the doors and flouncing off in a half and having all those sort of moments of temper that we could have as a human being. But they never last more than a few minutes. And then one of the others would say, I'm sorry, I'm being an idiot, and a cup of tea, and then a good laugh. Um, but it was difficult for her. Uh, but she knew that I would fight to ensure her safety. To my last breath, I would fought for her. Uh, and so was Sean. And equally, we know that she would, however she'd been, she would have fought tooth and nail to protect us too. So, Mum, you know, for the past 11 years, it has been a huge privilege to share her life with. But she knew it was going to be really hard for me to lose her. And I have a sense she struggled on and suffered for longer than she needed to because of me. Um, so, about a year ago, finally the universe brings my wonderful partner, George, into my life. And mother was thrilled. She absolutely adored George. It was clear anyone who saw them together could see Sheila's response to him. Even in the last few days of her life in the hospice, the doctors and the nurses could see how Sheila would always resonate whenever George was near. And so George helped them realise that it was okay, I'm going to be okay. 
and it's okay to move forwards. And that those of you who know her well will have known that she had a strong intuition and instinct, which was rarely wrong. And she knew she was close to the end of this life, and we talked a lot about it. And on the day we discussed her going to the hospice, which was to be the following day, by the way, it's a month ago yesterday that she went in, she knew that she needed to give me something really special. So to my surprise, to get your mobile phone out, I want you to video me saying a few words to you to remember. And she gave me this amazing, this, it's backed up everywhere, as you can imagine. But I'm just going to share with you, if I can, just a couple of the words from it. And she says, you have given me a wonderful home. You have been an amazing son to me. <clears throat> and I love you dearly. We weathered the storms together. We have always done so, and we always will. I shall be waiting for you. I shall be waiting for you when your time comes. And then she blows me a big kiss. Thank you. How do I follow that? <laughs> <laughs> Let me adopt all the things that Hayden has said about our beautiful love. She was always our rock. We knew from when she soothed us as children, caught our corner, teased us, pretended to find our jokes funny. <laughs> Mine were his words. <laughs> she was there for us, for whatever, whenever. Her marriage to our father was not always a happy one. She did all within her power to hold it together at great personal sacrifice and cost. It's something that's defined her over the years. Mm -hmm. Yet despite the personal sacrifice, she still had time and love for her work as a teacher and as a mentor for others. She adored passing on skills to provide the keys for others to open the doors to their lives. As a head teacher at White House Common First School, she was a clarion call for excellence in all the key disciplines. But excellence to her meant doing the very best that you were capable of. You didn't have to be an Einstein. It was getting the very best out of you. Her school was vibrant. It was vibrant with music, art, tolerance, and Diane, who's here, will remember that so very, very well. Tolerance and respect for others and their beliefs. On entering the school, there was a, an electric buzz of smiling, happy children and staff enthralled at the joys of learning and exploration. And as Violette has mentioned, it was regarded as a model and was roundly praised as such. And she would uh, even do thought for the day on the local radio, embracing her ethos of respect and tolerance. And indeed, when she retired, and I'll say a little bit more about retirement in a moment, so many past pupils came back to undertake something called the Sheila Williams Farewell Concert. It was one of the most magical things because she brought music into the hearts of so many people. And some people had gone on to be uh, concert level standard. And they came back to undertake. Do you remember it? Remember. The wonderful concert. I want to mention a particular person that she taught. A little boy. Who had one of the most unsettled starts to life. And she made it her business to become someone he ended up regarding as his mum. The authorities had even drawn up the adoption papers, and she would have adopted him had our father not declined to do so. Nevertheless, she became his lifelong mentor. Hayden and I regard him as a brother. We're so proud to have him here today. His name is Lawrence Meir. He's done well using the love and skills that he was so eager to acquire. And now with a good job, beautiful family, 
He and his gorgeous wife, Marty, have become foster parents and adoptees to others to balance love, to provide balanced love and stability into many young lives, selflessly giving back so much. Loz, Mum was very proud of you, and so are we. She also adored and was very proud of her granddaughter, Emily. She loved their time together, especially when Emily did things like her hair and her nails. If you get a chance to look at Emily's nails later, you'll see the thing I'm talking about. <laughs> Emma, I haven't told you this yet. Forgive me, because it's difficult to get out. But she told me to tell you that she will always be beside you whenever you need her. In June of 2018, I became engaged to my lovely Diane. Miss Diane. <laughs> Mum called her Nuna, and they loved each other. And because of COVID, we've had to postpone our wedding until, in fact, now, June of next year. <coughs> Mum was so looking forward to the wedding, wasn't she? Which we had to postpone a couple of times. But before she passed, and in fact, while she was in the hospice, she made it very clear to me she was still coming anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and Mum, we have no doubt. I owe mum decency, integrity, empathy, tolerance, respect, all underpinned with the power of unconditional love which unites all things. That unity which I later, later discovered was the bedrock of her Baha'i faith. The beautiful faith which embraces the essential worth of all religions and the unity of all people. How I shall miss the laughter the banter, the teasing. My first recollection of her laughing uncontrollably when I was about four. She was with me, walking me around some department store with her mum, my nana. And they were deep in conversation and were trying to get me onto an escalator. Mum became exasperated with me because I didn't appear to be moving until they realised that in fact the escalator was coming down and not going up. <laughs> I've never, and I can remember it to this day, hysterical, uncontrollable laughter. Of course, always at my expense. But usually was. My last recollection of that hysterical laughter was when she was in the hospice. And in fact, it was on a Saturday, four weeks ago, the day after she went into the hospice. We just laughed together, and it doesn't really matter about what. It was simply something that identified her, a sense of humour that radiated as a beacon, delighting all who were privileged to witness it. She wanted to retire, in fact, a couple of years before she did, but the Education Authority in Birmingham begged her to stay on to assist in, amongst other things, the development of the religious education uh, syllabus for the city of Birmingham. Of course, she did. And when she, as, you, as Hayden has been mentioning, when she in fact retired, she didn't really retire at all. She continued doing all kinds of things, and as a special coach for children who needed personal and special guidance. She was always active, always engaged. She embraced the Baha'i faith, she cared deeply and passionately about the environment and how we should be saving our planet. She simply never stopped. And it was only when her health began to deteriorate and she felt trapped and caged. She wanted to do things that her body would no longer let her. She tried not to let the pain show, but she knew she was hurting. That pain was eased by the joy of her friendship with Jenny, Has Jenny Harrison, her son Andy and their two beautiful children, Jamie and Sophie, who are here. Mum regarded Jenny, you as her daughter. A daughter that in fact she'd never had. And she loved you and your family and loved Jamie and Sophie as if they were her own grandchildren. Her day to day pain was also eased and Hayden's mentioned Diane, her great friend Diane Pete. Diane would do all manner of things, but best of all was being Mum's companion. And the times that Mum said to me, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have Jenny and Diane. She's also been blessed with the most fabulous
caring and loving neighbours. And the Candela family are here today. You're wonderful. You've been wonderful. And I want to thank you all so much for loving and caring for our mum. She also adored her Siamese cats, <laughs> one of whom is sick this morning. I mean, come on, I mean, but yes. <laughs> Oliver and Hannabella, and the things that she did for those cats. When Hayden and I were speaking about what we were going to say, we both independently, independently remembered the words of William Wordsworth. And I'm, he's already referred to part of it, um, the nameless unremembered acts which add up to something extraordinary. Now, those were lines that were taken from his poem, composed a few miles above Tintin Abbey on revisiting the banks of the Wye during a tour on July the 13th, 1798. He started to write that poem on the 14th of July, 1798. Mum, of course, died on the 14th of July. A passage from it, only a passage. These beauteous forms, for a long absence, have not been to me as is a landscape to a blind man's eye. But oft in lonely rooms amid the din of towns and cities, I've owed to them, in hours of weariness, sensations sweet, felt in the blood and felt along the heart, and passing even into my purer mind with tranquil restoration, feelings too of unremembered pleasure, such perhaps as have no slight or trivial influence on that best portion of a good man's life. His little nameless unremembered acts of kindness and of love, nor less I trust to them I may have owed another gift of aspect more sublime, that blessed mood in which the burden of the mystery in which the heavy and the weary weight of all this unintelligible world is lightened. That serene and blessed mood in which the affections gently lead us on. Until the breath of this corporeal frame and even the motion of our human blood, almost suspended, we are laid asleep in body and become a living soul. While with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony and the deep power of joy, we see into the life of things. Wasn't he right? Yeah. Mum spent her last few days at Warwick Mighton Hospice. And Hayden and I simply can't praise highly enough the staff there. They were truly magnificent, weren't they? And indeed, you will see from your uh, orders of service that the uh, donations um, are to Mighton Hospice through the undertakers. They are truly magnificent. On the evening of the 14th of July, Hayden and I knew that she was still fighting to be there for us. Her boys, trying not to let us down. And Hayden and I, supported by his magnificent partner, George, were at her bedside. I held one hand and Hayden the other. We told her how wonderful she'd been to us, how we owed everything to her, how much we adored her, but it was now time to let go and walk into the immaculate light where her mum and dad were waiting for her. It was time for her to soar. She held us both and shed a tear and then flew away. I remember these words because she wasn't in pain anymore and we couldn't have her back like she was. When God saw you getting tired and the cure was not to be, he put his arm around you and whispered, come to me. He didn't like what you went through and he gave you rest. His garden must be beautiful. He only takes the best. And when we saw you sleeping so peaceful and free from pain, we wouldn't wish you back to suffer that again. Today we said goodbye and as you take your final rest, that garden must be beautiful because you are one of the best. So Mother Flem, and it, it seemed almost inappropriate until I thought hard about it. I don't know how many of you actually watched the Shawshank Redemption. Probably a lot of people have seen the Shawshank Redemption. 
and Morgan Freeman, who played Red Redding. And some lines from him seem somehow to be very appropriate, and he said this, I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. Their feathers are just too bright. And when they fly away, the part of you that knows it was a sin to lock them up does rejoice. Still, the place you live in is that much more drab and empty that they're gone. Some years ago, I myself wrote these lines. I recall them because although mum physically has gone, her body, her, she's here, her soul is here. Her soul is moving on that journey that Violetta has so beautifully described. And what I said was this, let me stand with you at this hour and share the joy, the warmth, the power of laughter, friendship, endless love complete that wrenches pure victory from desolate defeat. Open wide your eyes, shed no tears, put away your sad face, grim mood, darkest fears. I am beside you, smiling, warm and bright. Feel me shining through the immaculate light. Do not say goodbye and walk away. Instead, look to me, open your heart and say, embrace me, hold me, be ours still. My loves, hear me whisper, I always will. Mum, you're now flying, as you were always destined to do to soar into the eternal immaculate light where Aidan and I know, and as she said, she'll be waiting for us. Her arms outreached with the same indefatigable love and smiling the same iridescent smile that we can all remember so well and see on the picture here beside us. God bless you all. Would anyone else like to say anything? Emily. Anna loved the comfort of her home. It was always full of warmth, joy, laughter, kindness, love and compassion. I want to share a poem that was very special to her by Abdul Baha. My home is the home of peace. My home is the home of joy and delight. My home is the home of laughter and exaltation. Whoever enters through the portals of this home must go out with gladsome heart. This is the home of light. Whoever enters here must become illuminated. Your guidance and influence on me during our special times at home has made me the woman I have finally become. I love you, Nana. I'm going to ask that we just reflect for a little while and listen to some, to some wonderful music. Sure. Sure. There's some other people. Oh, there are some other people. I'm so sorry. Who, who would like to say something? I'm so sorry. Please, please, please do. That's very short. I'm old now. I can't see as well. <laughs> Yeah, Sheila was an extraordinary person. Uh, she was my teacher at primary school. And um, as uh, Payne and Sean have shared, she literally lit up assemblies um, with her passion and storytelling abilities. Um, she cared so much about every child and parent, and that's what made her so special. I have fond memories as a child of leaving the whole school during the Baha'i New Year celebration um, assembly in the song We Are Drops, which is about oneness. And Sheila was supporting me as I looked down to the sea of children. Um, even though I moved on from White House Common, where Sheila worked, um, she continued to support me with my English and creative writing, um, giving me the confidence to believe in myself as well as, as, well as of course, being meticulous and making sure I use the correct grammar. Um, Sheila went on to help my brother and my sister in the same way, and I know they're both deeply grateful for that. Um, as we grew up, Sheila would continue to be part of our lives. Whenever you saw her at an event, she would give you a huge squeeze. She gave the best hugs. Um, she continued to be interested and proud of the different milestones in my life and that 
my siblings better than Leo, especially when I went on to study English literature at university after having spent many hours with her writing stories in my childhood at her home in Sutton Coalfield. Um, Leo, my brother, shared with me that he loved Sheila's determination and tenacity, which was shown in earnest when she went to visit him at the High World Centre in Haifa, which is literally built on the side of a mountain. Um, she was like a spiritual aunt to me, Bella and Leo, and we will really miss her. Thank you. Please. No, stay where you are, please. Yeah. Whenever you're coming. Um, I think beside the, you know, the friends and the family, I think I'm the longest one, because I've been in England nearly 60 years, and since she'd have become a Baha'i, I know her. A wonderful friends, and I always remember, uh, I'm no hate I know, but I'll ring. Hello, darling. <laughs> hello, darling. Oh, it's hello, darling. <laughs> so I miss most. A wonderful friend. She always used to, I mean, I said, I said, Sheila, darling, and I'm reading, or if I'm saying something, please correct me. I know I've been here for so long, but with the grammar and everything, obviously, I was getting it, you know, from her. And she, she always used to correct me. No, 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 you don't say that. You say that this way. And she knew I love to crack myself, and I love to. And I was happy. on all of that and um, I think we're going to play, uh, Hayden's going to play a little bit, a uh, little more music um, and perhaps um, very appropriately it's uh, In Paradisum from Requiem by Foray. It's sung by Catherine Jenkins who was one of Mum's uh, very famous artists, favourite artists. Favourite famous artists? Famous. <laughs> Thank you.
O Son of Being, thy paradise is my love, thy heavenly home, reunion with me. Enter therein and tarry not. This is that which hath been destined for thee in our kingdom above and our exalted dominion. Know thou of a truth that the soul, after its separation from the body, will continue to progress until it attaineth the presence of God in a state and condition which neither the revolution of ages and centuries nor the ch changes and chances of the world can alter. It will endure as long as the kingdom of God, his sovereignty, his dominion and power will endure. Death proffereth unto every confident believer the cup that is life indeed. It bestoweth joy and is the bearer of gladness. It conferreth the gift of everlasting life. This is faith. To walk where there is no path. To breathe where there is no air. To see where there is no light, this is faith. To cry out in the silence, the silence of the night, and hearing no echo, believe, and believe again and again, this is faith. To hold pebbles and see jewels, to raise sticks and see forests, to smile with weeping eyes, this is faith. To say, God, I believe, when others deny. I hear when there is no answer. I see though naught is seen, this is faith. And the fierce love in the heart, the savage love that cries, Hidden thou art, yet there. Veil thy face, mute thy tongue, yet I see and hear thee, love. Beat me down to the bare earth, yet I rise and love thee, love. This is faith.
Glory be to thee, O Lord my God. Abase not him whom thou hast exalted through the power of thine everlasting sovereignty. And remove not far from thee him whom thou hast caused to enter the tabernacle of thine eternity. Wilt thou cast away, O my God, him whom thou hast overshadowed with thy lordship? And wilt thou turn away from thee, O my desire, him to whom thou hast been a refuge? Canst thou degrade him whom thou hast uplifted, or forget him whom thou didst enable to remember thee? Glorified, immensely glorified art thou. Thou art he who from everlasting has been the king of the entire creation and its prime mover, and thou wilt to everlasting remain the lord of all created things and their ordainer. Glorified art thou, O my God, if thou ceasest to be merciful unto thy servants, who then will show mercy unto them? And if thou refusest to succour thy loved ones, who is there that can succour them? Glorified, immeasurably glorified art thou. Thou art adored in thy truth, and thee do we all verily worship. And thou art manifest in thy justice, and to thee do we all verily bear witness. Thou art in truth beloved in thy grace, no God is there but thee, the help in peril, the self-subsisting. Amen. From the sweet-scented streams of thine eternity, give me to drink, O oh my God. Within the meadows of thy nearness, before thy presence, make me able to roam, O oh my beloved. Into the heights of the paradise of thy reality, let me gain admission, O oh my adored one. To the melodies of the dove of thy oneness, suffer me to hearken, O oh resplendent one. Within the garden of thine immortality, before thy countenance, let me abide forever. O thou, who art merciful unto me.
thank you all so very, very much for being here today, helping us to say farewell, helping us to remember. Thank you very much for everybody who's taken part. Thank you very much to you for simply being here. Thank you to Beverly, who has done so much to help to set up the, the hall. She loved you very much, as you know. Thank you to George, who's also helped greatly. And you also have the benefit later on of some wonderful cuisine. Uh, I say I have spare her blushes at the back, but Sally J. Squire, who is uh, quite a famous chef, she's taken some time out from working on the Great British Chef to be here to help um, put together a spread, which I hope you're going to help us um, <laughs> demolish a little bit later. What I'm going to say very briefly is this, that there will be um, a little bit of music as one is taken from the hall, and then there will be an internal tap, as you can see from your uh, order papers, on the <coughs> Greenhaven Woodland Burial Ground, which is only a short distance from here. For those of you who want to come and join, join us for the burial, please feel free to do so. If you want to stay here and have um, a few drinks, have a, a tea or a coffee or something, then please do so. You're more than welcome to do whatever you, whatever you wish. I mentioned Warwick Martin Hospice. <clears throat> Please, if you can, give something to that through the undertakers. We'd be very, very grateful. Perhaps uh, some brief closing words in this form. There's no light without a dawning, no winter without a spring, and beyond the dark horizon, our hearts will once more sink. For those who leave us for a while, have only gone away out of the restless, careworn world into a brighter day. Well, Mum has flown, and we know that she's now soaring. We know that she's now flying. So what better way to reflect on that as she leaves us from this room by listening to Randy Crawford's One Day I'll Fly Away. <laughs>
Must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You've been content to let me shine You always walked a step behind I was the one with all the glory while you were the one with all the strength only a face without I never once heard you complain the wind beneath
beneath my wings
Races there with hope and coin for two And you fill my life with laughter You can make it better Is my trouble, that's what you do Cause the love is divine And it's just that it's mine Like the sun At the end of the day We should give thanks and pray to the one Have I told you lately that I love you? Have I told you there's no one above you? Fill my heart with gladness Take away my sadness Ease my troubles, that's what you do special prayer that has to be said. Yes, thank you. Please come. Do you want to come forward a bit if you... If you huh? Say again. No. Shall I? Or just, because I wasn't sure whether you would or not, you see. Just, just do it spontaneously. Give, give this to somebody else. Oh my God, this is thy handmaiden and the daughter of thy handmaiden, who hath believed in thee and in thy signs, and set her face towards thee, wholly detached from all except thee. Thou art verily of those who show mercy the most merciful. Deal with her, O thou, who forgivest the sins of men and concealest their faults, as beseemeth the heaven of thy bounty and the ocean of thy grace. Grant her admission within the precincts of thy transcendent mercy that was before the foundation of earth and heaven. There is no God but thee, the ever forgiving, the most generous. Allah Pa. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. 
We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. We all verily worship God. Allah Appa. We all verily bow down before God. 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 Allahu Akbar. We all verily are devoted unto God. 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 Allah Appa. We all verily give praise unto God. 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 Allah Appa. We all verily yield thanks unto God. 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 Allah Appa. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. 
We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God. We all verily are patient in God.
your surface, you are so strong. You must be very proud of this mold. Gosh, mm. she is so fond of you. Neighbors we always all talked about her sickening. And you miss her so much. so many beautiful memories. We just hadn't got enough time with yes. her. And how proud she was of the children. Yes. She showed me the pictures of yes. them. The graduation pictures. Yes. And she's always been proud of always, you all. Always encouraging. Mm. Yes. This is the she was. And we know she's in God's care. Yes, She absolutely. didn't deserve to suffer the way she did. Sons are here, yes. both your sons. <laughs> Otherwise you may hear things you don't want to hear. <laughs>
Th thank you very much for your help. See you, I'm pretty short for room. Huh? Pretty short for room, you see, this race. Thank you very much. Bye. Lovely, yeah, uh, fuel director. Very, very nice guy. So much better for the family as well, where you have funeral directors who are like this company and work really well. They work really well with um, others who are also all trying to help and do the best for the family as well. You don't always get it, you'll be surprised. Uh, fortunately, there are, there are many who were very good, but it's not a given. extremely dusty down here. I'm just hold, holding back from the car in front. I could do without all the dust um, going into the camera. Um, I'm not really in a, under, under any enormous rush now. So the, um, the live streaming is going to continue. Um, I'm here for another hour and um, hopefully the live streaming. I noticed when I got to the to this burial site that the streaming looked as though it just began to buffer momentarily and then, then resumed fine again. Now I came here two days ago to test all this out and um, I found the same but worse because my settings were asking too much. So I've deliberately chosen settings which are a compromise between giving you a good picture but not the best picture because the best picture would be no picture at all where we've just been to because from experimenting and testing I found that um, settings today have worked just perfect as a compromise between quality and, and, and not getting anything at all. So, um, driving back to the village hall where the streaming will continue for one more hour. Uh, well, we're expected to see some cricket as well and people having some refreshments and conversating. If anyone has some stories that would like to put on camera, I'll be doing that as well. This kind of filming it will, will, won't be in the final film. This is why I edit and use multiple cameras. But at the moment I've got no other cameras apart from this one running. When we drove here we had the camera on the back of the hearse showing filming the cortege which you haven't seen which is why it's a very good idea if you can check with Hayden and family and come back and see the edited film. I normally say about two weeks if I can do it quicker I, of course I always will do. I am very busy at the moment so I will stick with the two week window. Uh, so if you can come back and have a look at the edited film. There was three cameras inside the village hall for the service and I've used a separate handheld one and then I've had one on the, on the vehicle as well. So five cameras, uh, a lot of microphones in the region of about six or seven inside the village hall, um, which I then balance and um, create the best sound possible. Difficult when it's live, um, it's, it's not done for a TV studio where it can all be set up and, um, and there's a whole team of people. I'm working on my own, I have to do everything, and um, it's not for the cameras, it's not, it, I don't like to impede, or I don't impede, I don't um, choreograph anything. It would be wrong for me I had to do so, I believe, so. It's all, um, I do a lot of planning, uh, don't get me wrong, but it, it, I have to adapt to what happens, where people are speaking from. I didn't know exactly where people were talking from beforehand. So we're back at the village hall now and I will get this camera out and place it somewhere and then I'll get ready and I'll come back to it and then and then see what we can film here. But for the time being I'm just parking up, getting the camera out, give you a view 
and then I'll find what's going on. I'm just going to park over here.
Now, most people who have started taking sweets, like, sorry, I'm not going to say Is it? 
Hello, um, my name is Mitra and I've come from Nuneaton where I live and I'm a member of the Baha'i community in Nuneaton and I have met Sheila just a few times. I didn't know her very well but really I, over the years when I've lived in this area I have always heard wonderful things about her, wonderful things about her and her many many talents and her ability to um, integrate with different people and the work she did with interface and the education of children which was mentioned today in the service as well and I just thought I'd come and pay respects to this wonderful lady and her family so it's been really lovely and you can see a testament to her many many talents and friendships by the people who are here and the variety of backgrounds and nationalities and faiths and everything who have attended the service. So it's been really a really lovely way to remember her. Thank you. it to but um, I just like to say to Sheila um, thank you for all the love and support you've given our family particularly our children um, and um, on my behalf anyway I'll never forgive you for entering me into the school race for adults <laughs> yes and Sheila yes my best friend but also always my head teacher to the very end and even when you weren't feeling very well, every now and then that little finger used to come out and used to say, look here, watch this, and wagging your finger. And I used to, I used to know my place then. Thank you for the support of our family. Um, sharing one memory of Sheila specifically is a really difficult task. So I thought I'd share uh, the immediate feeling that comes to mind when I think of her. For me, it's gratitude. Throughout my whole upbringing, when it came to my education, connection with my faith, and my overall development as a person, Sheila was a constant. From teaching me how to read in my childhood, and giving me the confidence to walk into an exam hall, to travelling to Paris to visit the house of Abdul Baha, and reminding me that I should always be proud of myself. She was there helping me in a way that no one else could. The love she so effortlessly expressed, her ability to speak and read so kindly yet majestically, and her presence that made you feel so comforting is for, what, is for me what made her such a unique person. We've all come across the notion of leaving our mark on the world before we pass on to the next but it's with so much ease and undeniable evidence of people like myself and the rest of my family. 
um, and, and others that she'll have touched even. But I say she is a perfect example of what it means to leave a mark. And that's why when you're asked to share memories of someone as unique as Sheila, it's a difficult task. Because a memory is often infers something of the past. But if it wasn't for Sheila, I wouldn't be who I am or where I am today. Leaving a mark is something that's lasting. And how Sheila taught me and what she taught me will continue to influence and inspire my life well into the future. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so for me, one of uh, Sheila's qualities that always inspired me was her determination. Um, and one example of this was back in 2015 when I was um, serving at the Baha'i World Centre. Um, despite her mobility issues, uh, she still came and visited me um, in Israel, uh, 4,000 kilometres away. Um, and I'll never forget how she climbed up all the steps uh, to my apartment. And it just shows that she will never um, not do anything out of love and she'll never let anything stop her, uh, particularly when she wants to do something out of love. And um, also you could never not be attracted by the warmth of her words and her actions, um, her smiles, her hugs, um, even the little things like um, tapping at the window um, or at the door uh, whenever I'd come to see her at her home in the boulevard. Um, receiving uh, a sticker uh, for writing a story or um, hearing stories of her own. Um, as well as Sheila being unique and special, she had a gift of making others feel that way and she would always um, point out or identify the positive attributes that people have that they wouldn't see in themselves and um, she would remind you of your goals, your achievements, how far you've come. Um, so I still very much feel that um, whether you're around her for a long time or not, she will always be part of your journey um, and she still is um, and we're always part of hers. Uh, thank you Sheila. Um, I remember the spirituality course that we did with Sheila. Um, it was when I was a very, a very, very baby Baha'i. Um, and I remember um, wearing this skirt, uh, basically, to my very first Baha'i meeting, where I obviously met um, Sheila for the first time and um, met my husband for the first time. So I wanted to wear the skirt today because she would talk about it afterwards. She would talk about the beautiful skirt. So, um, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely lady. Yeah, uh, I met uh, Sheila uh, in 2001, uh, summer 2001, and uh, I, have, uh, I was lucky to meet all the Baha'i that day because there was a book release uh, from Canada. And uh, yeah, I find her very gentle and uh, caring, and, and then I find out we, we had the same birthday. So every April she used to remind me, it's soon our birthday. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, she was very fond of my uh, uh, of our kids as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She's uh, she was special. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. You don't look that old either. Pardon? You don't look that old either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Sheila Williams is very, very special to my family, the Academy family, um, from my grandmother all the way down to my daughter. And um, I never forget Sheila. The wonderful thing every time you saw Sheila was the amazing embrace that she she would just grab you and embrace you with the utmost love and was always so joyful every time she was around us and i never forget that another thing um my 16th birthday in our baha'i family violet arranged for all of us to go to scarborough and i was turning 16 on the day that we got there and between sheila bev and violet they decorated my whole bedroom with balloons and streamers and everything and just made it the most amazing birthday i could ever ever possibly have had and Sheila you were a big part of that so thank you for that I will love you forever miss you forever 
my grandmother, Farinaz, all of us, we love you dearly and we know you'll still be here with us along the rest of our path. God bless you, Sheila. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Hi, Sheila. Even though you're not here with us, I know that I think a lot about you. It was a privilege to know you. Um, my kids, the fostering you helped me with, the, the lads, Sean and Hayden, always were there when I really did need them. And you was as well. There was many times that you pulled me out the mire as well, I think of it. Um, and you were a mum to me, always, and you'll always be. I may not have had them all, but if there was one, it would have been you. I'm privileged to have known you, and I think anybody who did know you was privileged as well, because you were so special. And there'd be nobody else in this world that I would want to be mine. And I know that with Hayden and Sean, they, you know, said it today and I didn't know what to do. So thank you. And it's a privilege. I don't know what else to say now. So thank you. Bye. Is that right? Okay, okay. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say um, it was such a delight to know Sheila. And, um, you know, I'd sort of, sometimes I rang up for her to consult with her with different things and she gave such lovely advice. She's always so happy to talk to you on the phone later on and I remember her beautiful gathering she used to have at her house. Um, and uh, I just, you know, my mum just passed away and I bet they're having a party up there. <laughs> so, uh, just it was just a joy to know her. She was such a generous lady. Yeah, thank you, Sheila. <laughs> Wish you all the best. See you soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Um, today we've heard lots about Sheila's wonderful, wonderful qualities and I endorse absolutely everything. She was marvellous. She was also quite naughty at times. She got the cheekiest, cheekiest sense of humour and could be incredibly irreverent and the two of us would just giggle together about something naughty. Um, she was an absolute one-off and I know that her family and the people closest to her are going to miss her terribly. Okay. Well, Chris and I live next door to Sheila um, back in 1977 and we had two, well I had one small child and then we had a second and so Sheila was hugely significant in being positive and helpful and a wonderful, wonderful neighbour. And there was one day my two were arguing in the garden together, they were about age four and two, and I was saying, shh, Mrs Williams doesn't want to come home from work and listen to two little children arguing in the garden. And suddenly her head popped up above the fence and she said, Judy, enjoy it. I don't mind and it'll all go so quickly. And those two children are now 46 and 43. Sheila was a fabulous neighbour, always bright, smile, laughter. And whenever I think of Sheila, it's her bright smile and her laughter that we remember most. And although we've not seen a lot of her since they moved to um, out here to rugby, I have a chat every year, we chatted. And the last chat I had with her was at Christmas when she knew she was so poorly, but she was still positive chatty and that wonderful laugh. We'll never forget Sheila, great neighbour. I knew Sheila many, many, many years ago. I think I'm the actually um, the elder and the longest person in Sutton Coffee in Birmingham. No, Sheila. And I always remember when I used to ring her and used to say, hello, darling. And I was, uh, our nickname, hello darling. And that's a miss, I miss her to ring her and I just hear, hello darling. And also, she used to, oh, I was so grateful, she used to correct me my, um, my grammar. Obviously when I talk in English, and she used to say, no, 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 Vahide. 
you say it this way, you know, the English way they say it this way. And I was very, very grateful whenever she has corrected me and everything. And uh, I remember once, uh, you know, they used to come to see me with Val. Uh, oh, the big fish and chip portion, and they come in and we sat there and eating the fish and chips, and it was lovely. And uh, we went to see her house, and I miss her. I miss her. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I hope. I know she's gone to the better place, and I'm now. We all will go one day. We all go there and probably meet her again. And we'll probably as soon as she will say, "Hello, darling, you're here now to meet me." But God bless you, uh, darling, and I do miss you in this world. But uh, uh, I hope uh, at least you're out of pain now, sweetheart. Thank you. I believe your son's met her occasionally as well. Yeah, I've met, yes, I've met yes. her a few times, obviously, at the parties, when I was at Mum's. So, yes, yeah, she's a lovely lady, I have to admit. Um, she called me an honorary Baha'i. Um, so no, it was very nice. So yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, she was very, very kind, very kind. Yes. It, uh, Seemed very, very down to down to earth as oh, well. Oh, she was very down, down to, to earth. earth. She was absolutely, she was unique. That's the word. She was unique, unique lady. She was really. You can't describe her. She was so as the uh, my son said, well. bubbly, down to earth. Uh, Always laughing. Always laughing. Always, I remember her smile and everything, and uh, never show her if she was poorly or had pain. Never show her she was. You know, she used to cover it well. Yeah. And uh, I do miss her. I do miss her. I love her very much. But anyhow, rest at peace, my darling. See you soon. Well, not too soon, but I'll see you soon. <laughs> Don't get my trainers in, will you? Because I'll kill you. I'm Diane. My my trainers. Your trainers. I've got. I've had a knee replacement, so that's why I look fine. What's wrong with those? I look like you know my old mother. They look okay. I might even have something very similar. This is for Sheila. Sheila and I met five years ago when I Sean introduced me as his girlfriend to to Sheila. And I have to say, from the minute I met you, you welcomed me into your family, welcomed me into your arms. And I just can't thank you enough. Sean's been the most inspirational person I've ever met. And Sheila, we talked a few months ago about you knew you wouldn't be here for the, for the wedding next year. And I showed you my wedding dress and you were just overawed. And I will wear it next year. I will get into it. We spent a lot of time in that bedroom. Do you remember, Sheila, looking at different, because I said to you I wasn't going to have the, that wedding dress it was two and a half years ago but you said I must then we looked at other wedding dresses and you went no dear no darling it's not for you you stay with the original and I just want to say thank you Sheila you've meant you've brought such inspiration and I just miss you and I will love you dearly and I promise I will look after Hayden and Sean lots of love bye bye hi Nana love you always hi Sheila just wanted to say a perfect day so sorry you're not here. Love you always. Thank you. Uh, that, I uh, believe, is that now. So um, there is no one left who I haven't asked and hasn't given their, their words and memories and shared those moments with us. Uh, there's very few people left, and um, I've, we, everyone who's left has, has said something, or one or two have uh, declined. So thank you very much. That uh, brings to conclusion today's live streaming. Thank you for staying with us, and uh, our memories and best wishes for the family, and uh, thinking of Sheila. Thank you. Goodbye.